Today I'm going to be going over six inexpensive fragrances that when they run out, there is no doubt I will be buying, purchasing another bottle of these fragrances because I think they smell that good and the quality of the juice, especially of some of these, for what you pay, they're no brainers. Stay tuned. <laughs> What is good YouTube? Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel. My name is Mikey Cologne and thank you very much for tuning in today. I hope everybody is doing well. I hope everybody is staying safe out there. Are you enjoying your summer? Summer's nearly over here in England. I reckon we've got a few more weeks of good weather and then it's going to start turning a little bit. But I wanted to speak about six inexpensive fragrances today. I'm probably going to make a part two to this because I could even make a part three and a part four because I have loads of inexpensive fragrances that I genuinely love. And these, the six I'm going to be talking about today, I mean, they're masculine offerings. Could a woman wear one or two of these? Maybe, but each to their own. Some women enjoy masculine fragrances and vice versa. But before I do get going, if you do enjoy my content, hit the subscribe button. And I want to say a big thank you to all my subscribers. Right, first off, I'm going to start with a fragrance from the house of Paris Corner. This is Celestial Amir. I do love the look of this bowl. Some people think that the cap is tacky. I enjoy it. It's not got no weight to it. It is metal, but it has a plastic insert. This is a 100ml bottle, and I believe this is extract to perfume. Now, this is a clone of Marc Antoine Bois Ganymede. And let me tell you something, I do own that fragrance, and I can confirm that this is a very close interpretation, if you want to call it, of Ganymede. There is a couple of differences. I'm not going to go too much into the differences. I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of this fragrance. First, I'm going to read you the notes, like I always do. You've got mineral notes, saffron, suede, violet leaf, Aki Gala wood, immortel, Italian mandarin, and Chinese osmanthus. Now, this starts out cold, metallic, ozonic, I would say a little bit sharp, spicy, and definitely fresh. Now, after about a minute or two, you can start noticing that Italian mandarin. It does come through very lightly, but that is one of the differences between this and Ganymede, where that Italian Mandarin pops more in Ganymede than what it does in this, but you still get it, it's just very subdued. Now, as it starts to dry down, it starts to turn green, it's woodsy, it goes a little bit powdery. This fragrance doesn't chop and change too much. Sort of what you get in the opening is what you get in the mid, but that spice just calms down. But then as it goes from mid to dry down, that Chinese Osmanthus does push in a little bit of a fruity sweetness and the Immortel definitely gives this fragrance a dry side. This, my friends, Ganymede is one of my most favourite fragrances, which means this is. I reckon I've used about 30 to 40 ml of this juice and let me tell you something now, if you enjoy Ganymede and you don't want to rinse your bottle and you want to save that for the special occasions, but you love the scent so much that you want to make it your signature fragrance, get this, it will not let you down. As soon as you smell it, you will be like, that is Ganymede. It is that close. Obviously with Ganymede, the quality is better or higher quality but it doesn't take anything away from this fragrance because this isn't bad quality at all. I think you can pick this up in the UK for 35 to 40 pounds for 100 mil. Ganymede is 180 pounds for 100 mil in the UK. So there's a big price difference. I'm not taking anything away from Ganymede. I love that fragrance, but 
but I love this as well because it is that close. But anyway, first on the list, I will be repurchasing a bottle of this when it runs out, even though I own Ganymede. I think I've only used about five mil of Ganymede. See, some people, when they love a fragrance, they wear the head out of it. Me, on the other end of the spectrum. When I love a fragrance, I want to keep that bottle. I want to keep that juice. I want to smell the atomizer, put a cap back on and not spray it. It's the same that I have with fragrances. So with this, I can enjoy Ganymede. And longevity is good. Projection is strong, especially for the first hour and a half. This thing pushes. But anyway, Celestia Ormir from Paris Corner. This is worth the money. Next, we have a fragrance coming from a fragrance house called, I'm going to butcher this, Al Watina. This fragrance is called Cayenne Classic. Now, this, my friends, is a clone, very close clone of Dior on Intense. When I first sprayed this on, I'll never forget it. I thought, man, I know exactly what that is meant to be. That is meant to be Dior on Intense. Now, Fragrantica, or all the websites that I tried to get the notes from a while back, they're all wrong. I emailed or messaged this company and they sent me the correct notes. It is Tuscan Iris and Italian Orange up top, then in the mid is Leather and Rose, and then the base is Sandalwood, Ambrette, Muskmallow, Agar Wood, which is Oud, and Cedar. How does this open up? Exactly how Dior Om Intense opens up. You get a blast of that iris. And here it is buttery, it is creamy, it is a touch powdery. You do get a very light touch of that orange up top, which adds in a little bit of a very light fruity quality. Now with this, it's musky. That musk mellow in this fragrance, you get it from, or you get it in the opening, you get it in the mid, and you get it in the base. As it starts to settle in, you will get this soft leathery accord that runs through the mid of the fragrance and a very light touch of that rose. And then everything happens at once. You get this strong woodsy present. Now, with the sandalwood, it helps carry that creamy quality all, way, all the way through the fragrance. But the iris stays there as well. Even in the base, the iris is present. But the sandalwood is just there helping sort of notch that creamy quality up or keep that creamy quality alive. Because at first it's the iris and then as it starts to settle, the sandalwood then joins in and it carries it through into the base. The oud here, I can't tell you or I wouldn't think that it was oud. This just has a strong woodsy presence once it starts to dry down. Because you've got the cedar, you've got the sandalwood and you have got the oud. But I cannot pick up anything oody in this fragrance. Again, I think it's just I think it's just there as a bit of a backbone for the base. This is a fantastic fragrance. If you like Dior Om Intense, again, I'm gonna say it. Say if you have only got a little bit of it left and you can't afford another bottle, give this a go. This is 35 pounds in the UK for 100 ml. Longevity, six to seven hours. This is a moderate projecting fragrance. This is not beastly, but even, it's a, this is the way I can describe it. At first it pushes a little bit, but it's more for close encounters. Like it does leave a little trail, but if someone gets in your space, because this would be perfect for a date night, and genuinely I do think a woman can wear this fragrance. And if someone gets in your space, they're gonna pick it up. And the, the iris here also goes a little bit chocolatey. But anyway, that is Cayenne Classic from a house called Al Watina. Again, probably butchering that. This is superb. Up next, we have a dumb reach. 
fresh out the shower, great for spring, summer, but you can wear this all year round. Gym safe, office safe. You can wear this fragrance wherever, whenever, and it is 20 pounds for 100 ml. It is Karl Lagerfeld's, let me just get the name, Bois de Vetiver. 20 pounds for 100 ml. Longevity, five to six hours. It's not a beast mode fragrance, but it gets the job done. If you are literally tight on a budget and you want something that does smell good, this doesn't get, or this doesn't give off no alcohol blast. It doesn't smell cheap. Like when you spray this fragrance, you won't think, oh, that's a 20 pound piece of shit. No, the fragrance does smell of quality, especially what you pay for it. You've got blood orange, pink grapefruit, mint, vetiver, rose, geranium, ambroxin, musk, and patchouli. This is a fresh, citrusy, fresh, spicy bomb. That is how it opens up. You do get a little bit of a rindy quality up top from that grapefruit. The mint pushes in the freshness, but the mint mixing in with the vetiver gives this a little bit of a green touch. Plus, it has a woodsy tone. The geranium adds a little bit of an aromatic edge to it. This is definitely musky. The more this dries down, the musk heavier it gets. The patchouli comes in, which to me, in this, the patchouli mixing in with the vetiver sort of boosts that woodsy tone, but I get a little bit of an earthy quality in the dry down. It is masculine. It's like a sports fragrance. It comes across smelling like a blue style fragrance. And I'm gonna say it again, for 20 pounds, you will spray this and you will think, man, that smells really good. Again, you can wear it whenever. It is a crowd pleaser. It is a no-brainer. It is a dumb reach of a fragrance. If you have a small collection, if you have a big collection and you do not want to overthink something, say you just wake up one day, you're tired, you're a little bit moody and you have this in your collection, you just throw it on and you're going to smell good on the go. But anyway, that is Bois de Vetiver from Carl Lagerfeld. Great cheapy or inexpensive fragrance. The last fragrance that I spoke about would be great for wearing during the day. Bois de Vetiver from Carl Lagerfeld. This fragrance to me is more suited for evening wear. If you're a little bit smarter, dressed up, you could be wearing a nice shirt, a pair of shorts and a nice pair of deck shoes. But this is coming from a house called Maison Alhambra and this is Afro Leather. Now, this is a clone of Memo Paris's African Leather, hence the name Afro Leather. I love the way this smells and this does not smell cheap at all. This is 20 to 25 pounds in the UK but you have to appreciate spicy fragrances, especially in the opening of this. Right, you've got cardamom, leather, geranium, patchouli, vetiver, cumin, musk, geranium again, bergamot and agar wood. Agar wood is oud. Now, the bergamot is listed as a base note, but you get it in the opening. But first off, you get a blast of spice. That cardamom slaps you in the nose, it really does. And it takes a couple of minutes for that spicy quality to calm down. Now, as it starts to calm down, that is when you notice the bergamot. And the bergamot here is adding a little bit of freshness in. Plus, you do get a very slight citrusy quality from this fragrance. And then you will start to pick up on the leather. Now, the leather gives this that dark edge. And the leather comes across ever so slightly smoky. You have the cumin, which gives this fragrance a little bit of funk. And the way it sort of blends in with that leather, it kind of goes together because that funk sort of dulls that smoky quality up a little bit. Then as it starts to dry down more, then you start getting the oud. Now, the oud here is not animalic. It's not barnyardy. It's just got this strong... I would say earthy presence, or it gives this fragrance a strong woodsy earthy presence, especially once it goes from mid to dry down. At this stage, that spice has calmed down. You do get a little bit of an aromatic quality from this fragrance, that is from the geranium, plus the geranium helps carry the spice through the fragrance. But remember, that spice does calm down. The first couple of minutes, 
it is full on spice. After a couple of minutes, it calms down. If you don't like spicy fragrances, spray it on, try and keep your nose away from it for a couple of minutes, and then you will see, or you will see its true colors coming out. This is definitely a masculine fragrance. Like I say, for dressier occasions, I get seven hours of longevity with this, with moderate projection, and when you're, say you're fresh out of the shower, you're going to, you could be going on a date, you could be going out for drinks with the lads, you could be going to a wedding or a venue or a party, fresh out of the shower, and you're dressed up and you put this on, you look the part and you smell the part, it goes hand in hand. And for 20 to 25 pounds for this bottle, I want to say it's a no-brainer, it really is. But anyway, that is Afro Leather from, I was about to say from Memo Paris, no. This is Afro Leather from Maison Alhambra. Right, this fragrance that I'm going to talk about next, if you've been in the fragrance game for a little while, say that you follow other um, fellas and women that talk about perfumes, fragrances, you already know about this fragrance. And it does need no introduction. It's Latafa's Assad. Now, if you don't know, if you're new to this game, this is a clone of Dior Sauvage Elixir. And it is a good clone at that. Obviously, the quality is better with the OG. But trust me, this isn't bad quality at all. This is of very high quality, especially for what you can pick this up for. I think you can pick this up for 25 to 30 pounds for 100 ml. Whereas I think 60 ml of Dior Sauvage Elixir is about 130 pounds the last time I checked. But anyway, today we are talking about this fragrance. I am gonna spray it. Again, this is another one that is spicy. This is spicy all the way through but this is an aromatic bomb. You get hit with loads of lavender. And man, this is good. To me, this is like a true gentleman's scent. To me, it comes across smelling a little bit old schoolish, but modernized. And it does give off a little bit of a fougere-ish vibe. But this is clean, cut, smart. If you work in an office environment where you dress smart, say if you have important meetings, not even important meetings, just say if you have meetings all day long and you're wearing a suit or you're, again, you're looking smart, this would be a great fragrance to wear. Now, the notes that I found for this make no goddamn sense whatsoever and I'm gonna read them to you. A couple of them, I'm like, yeah, I believe they're in this fragrance. But listen, you got black pepper, pineapple, no. Tobacco, no. Patchouli, yeah. Coffee, no. Iris, I don't think so. This does have a powdery side, but I think it's due to the lavender. Vanilla, amber, dry woods and benzoin. Now, them last four notes, I agree with. How does this open up again? It opens up spicy, but I get the licorice, I get the cinnamon, I get the nutmeg that Dior Sauvage Elixir has, I pick them notes up in this fragrance. That is what I think is creating that spice. And like I say, straight away, you will get a ton of lavender and that sticks all the way through the life of the fragrance. And there is no lavender listed in the note breakdown that I found. I can tell you something now, there definitely ain't pineapple in this fragrance. That is for sure. And like I say, that lavender to me gives this a little bit of a powdery edge. Now, as it starts to settle in, or as it starts to dry down, it goes a little bit musky. It starts turning woodsy. And that lavender, it goes from powdery, then it starts going ever so slightly creamy, or this fragrance starts getting a little bit of a creamy quality to it. And that powdery side that it had at first, just starts dampening down and starts sort of fading out and sitting into the back. That is when the woods start amping up and coming forward. Now, whilst all this is going on, there's definitely vanilla floating in the air. And this fragrance starts out fresh, but the longer it sits, it starts to warm up. And this is where I can see the amber and the benzoin coming through. Because this does go a little bit balsamic and ambery, whilst woodsy, soft, spicy, and again, a little bit vanillic. Once that vinegar comes through, it stays, it floats, it sort of 
it sort of flows through the other notes into the fragrance. This is a stunner. This is getting repurchased. I've had this bottle of Dior Sauvage Elixir for ages. And I think I've used maybe, this is a 60 ml bottle and I've probably mm, 10 ml. And the reason why I've only used 10 ml of this is because I own this fragrance. When I wanna wear this, I wear this. It's as simple as that. And if you enjoy this fragrance, you're gonna love this. This will be your new best friend, I'm telling you, because it is that good. Again, better quality, but this is not bad quality at all. And for the money that you can pick these fragrances up for, it's crazy. I do not know how these houses do it. But anyway, that is a sard from the house of the Taffa. Now, I'm finishing off the review with another fragrance from the house of Latefa. Latefa do hit it out of the park when it comes to fragrances, when it comes to clones. So does Maison Alhambra and Paris Corner, to be fair. Some of these houses pump out some great fragrances. Yes, they pump out a lot of fragrances. Some of them can definitely be a miss, but quite a lot of them are hits. Now, this fragrance is a clone of Sedley from Perfumes de Mali. You already know what this fragrance is. is. This is, it is a mere legacy. Now, this is the cap. My one falls off and this thing is weighty. Do not let this hit you on the foot on the way down because you will be in bits, I'm telling you. But this fragrance is great. This to me, this is oh, the opening. I love the opening. I love the mid and I do enjoy the dry down, but the mid and the opening, that is where it's at for me because you get an explosion of this mint and lime and it, it slaps you across the chops and you've got a ton of notes. You've got lime, mint, grapefruit, lavender, pineapple, juniper berry, black pepper, rosemary, geranium, frankincense, ambroxin, oak moss, tonka bean, vetiver and cashmere. Straight away, you get the mint you get the lime. So this opens up with a blast of freshness. It really does. And to me, it ain't like toothpaste minty. It's more like, um, do you like a mint plant, the leaf, that greeny, freshy aroma that you get. That is what you get from this fragrance. But with this, you get the lime. Now, the lime and the grapefruit, they're not overdone here. They're a little bit tamed. And what I mean by that is they don't come across as bitter they just come across as citrusy. Now, as it starts to settle, it goes woodsy. It turns aromatic. You've got the pineapple. Now, the pineapple sort of makes it, as the fragrance dries down, the pineapple makes its way through from the back, which brings out its fruity quality. And I wouldn't say it's full on um, tropical pineapple. It just adds a little bit of a fruity twang into the fragrance. And then with the aromatics, they bring in a little bit of spice. So it's spicy, fresh, citrusy, fruity, woodsy, musky, aromatic. And that is the way it stays all the way through the life of the fragrance. And this is another one. The longer this sits on me, the more musk heavy it gets and the more woodsy it turns. This does have a very light earthy quality late in the dry down. When everything's completely calmed down, I do get a little bit of an earthy quality along with the woodsy tone that comes through. This is a semi-sweet fragrance. This is another one, you can wear this wherever you want. This should be great for spring, summer, but again, this will be a great all year round, fresh out the shower. You can wear this indoors, running chores, going to the office, going to the gym, going out for drinks. You can wear it wherever you want, fellas. And this is another great fragrance. This is 27 to 30 pounds in the UK for 100 ml. And again, this is a very good clone of Perfumes de Mali Sedley. I'm not taking anything away from that fragrance, but this is a good fragrance as well. It really is. Right, ladies and gentlemen, that is six fragrances, inexpensive fragrances that when they run out, there is no doubt I will be repurchasing every single one of these fragrances. Someone asked me ages ago, do you wear your cheap or inexpensive fragrances that you review? Yes, I do. As of lately, this has become my new love. I have worn this so much. First thing in the morning, early afternoon, during the evening, at bedtime, and continuously I've been rocking this fragrance. 
Then the other night I did wear this fragrance. I woke up in the middle of the night one night and I thought to myself, man, I need a little bit of iris in my life. Put this on, plus what all these fragrances I wear. All these fragrances I speak highly of because they deserve it. They really do. If any of these were shit and I didn't like them, they wouldn't even be on this list. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, which ones do you own out of these fragrances? Are you interested in any of these? I hope I covered everything. I hope everybody's doing well. And remember, smelling good's always a pleasure and never a chore. And I will see you lot on the next one. Cheers.